Hello and welcome to Is That Trophy Worth It? The series where we take a look at platinums that I have got and uh, we ask if you should get them as well. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but today we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. A relatively decent Assassin's Creed game, very mid-tier I would say. Um, I'm not putting it above like 4 or any of them, but I'm not putting it below like 3 or uh, Unity or anything like that. It's just very, it's, it's okay, it's a fine game, nothing too bad with it. And first things first, the setting of the game in London is very well done. Like it's gritty, but it is still very nice to look at. Um, I am also very biased because I am British, so London does mean a lot to me, even though I also low-key hate London. <laughs> but the setting itself is very nice. Um, I do love Big Man. I do love the, the way that the streets are and all this different stuff. I love the carriages. I love how it's portrayed. It's very well set out. It's one thing Assassin's Creed always does well. Historically, it's very well done. It's it was a it's like a, it's a good game for people like me who would love history because it does indulge history. It's not obviously not canon, canon. That's not the word you would use. Historically accurate, but it's fully anyway. But it's it does teach you to learn like to uh, learn about new characters. Like in this game, there was Charles Dickens. Why the fuck Charles Dickens was it? I'll never know because you talk to him like three times and that's all you do with him. But uh, still, aside from that. But no, but the to be fair, Charles Dickens, there was a reason for it. Because in Assassin's Creed 2, you had... Um, what was his face? Leonardo da Vinci. You had Leonardo da Vinci in Assassin's Creed 2. Um, and it's the same in Brotherhood. You also have da Vinci. Uh, Revelations, you also have da Vinci. 3, you have... You have someone else that's important to like history. Um, it's like every game has someone that's important to history. So Charles Dickens was this game's version of it. Um, aside from that, gameplay is like an Assassin's Creed game uh, before Odyssey or, or Origin. Sorry, obviously because or, Origins they changed their formula for the better. Some would say I would some I agree with it, um, but it plays fluidly. Not as good as two. Not as slow as three. It works just fine. Um, the big letdown for me in terms of the actual gameplay is the story. Jacob and Evie aren't super interesting characters. Um, and I don't really remember even what you're trying to stop. Obviously, there's the Templars. What are the Templars trying to do in uh, London? I don't know. Um... I remember most plots of Assassin's Creed game, but this one I don't. I really, I really, this game I do remember looking at the setting rather than the story, because the story would just felt like another Assassin's Creed game to me. It just felt like, oh, it's the same as it always is. So why am I going to pay attention to this one more than any other? Um, it wasn't unique enough for, to, to pique my interest, but it might be unique enough for you guys to uh, want to play it for the story. Um, aside from that, let's get into the trophy list. So we've got. Uh, a 17.82 percent platinum percentage across PSN profiles, which is obviously higher than it is on PSN, which is a 2.2 percent. Uh, and it took me personally one week, four days, which is a relatively normal time for a triple A open world game. And there are some annoying trophies, so let's go through that. So we've got 100 percent sync in main memories, not particularly hard in this game, but it can be quite grindy, especially if you get stuck on one of them. Um, I don't particularly remember getting stuck myself on any of them, but I definitely had to play a couple through again just to be like either uh, remain detected or do a certain amount of kills in a certain way. Uh, those ones they always suck, but it is a, it was at least a part of uh, Assassin's Creed early Assassin's Creed to get 100 percent memory main memory sync. Um, the, the optional side quests like liberating London and uh, bar fights and all this are like really easy. So you shouldn't have any qualms with that, um, you know, you, and it's probably the most fun part of the game is liberating London and doing all the side stuff. Like, I love doing side stuff, so that might be why it's the most fun for me. Um, without a grudge, it is a very annoying grind. And if you don't know, that trophy is for destroying 5,000 uh, breakable objects with your carriage. Uh, there is a route that I remember using that I found on YouTube that just... You just keep going around in a circle. It took me about three hours, I think. And this is like after the game, so I didn't really use the carriage during the game, though. So that would be why. But um, 
keep that in mind. So I, w- I would recommend going for that trophy throughout the game. I just keep getting the carriages and breaking things. Uh, don't be like me and leave it all till the end of the game and sitting there crying because you're doing something so boring and mundane that you want to die. But, uh, yeah, so keep that one in mind. There's another one that can be quite annoying, which is no tickets, which is kicking 50 enemies off of a train. Um, there are, I think there's a story mission that you're, well, there is a story mission where you're on a train. So I think you can keep replaying that to get it. Or you could, if you, if you can't keep replaying it, you can at least keep reloading a checkpoint or something like that. Uh, there'll be a way to do it, uh, in, in that mission. All the other miscellaneous trophies are relatively easy. Um, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, none of them really stick in my mind as annoying at the, um, now, um, maybe if I remember them, I'll bring them up in the next two or so minutes that this video has left. Um, because realistically, I should be wrapping this up. So, in terms of gameplay, uh, it's a solid 7 out of a 10. It's like a solid Assassin's Creed game, you know? Assassin's Creed, as a series, lived for so long because it does have its positives, and that's its historical focus, and its gameplay is always quite fun. You know, it has a good gameplay loop. If, if it was a bad series, people wouldn't buy it most years. Like, I originally wasn't going to buy um, Odyssey, Origins, and Valhalla, because I, I played Origins to begin with, and I didn't like it. But now I've platinumed all three, and I love them. I love the new style. Um, sometimes, uh, like, things like that are good. Aside from that, the trophy list is, like, 8 out of 10. There's only... Like a couple of annoying trophies is quite it's a little bit grindy but i think grindy is good grindy is better than it being boring um i would rather grind i, I like grinding so hey uh, you kind of have to like grinding if you want to be a trophy hunter so grindy is not a bad thing um but there are some like overly grindy stuff like it's okay if you're grinding something that's fun but going around in a circle for three hours isn't isn't it and the no ticket one can be quite boring as well um and also, if you get stuck on a main main sequence memory, that can get quite boring. Um, and then finally, like an overall rating, I'm going to give it... Mm, we'll give it a 7 out of 10 as well. Um, you know, story brings it down. Gameplay, uh, setting, trophy list kind of all bring it up, but story definitely lets it down quite a bit. You know, it's just such a boring story that, unfortunately, it doesn't stick in the memory. Unlike other games where even like a boring game like Order 1886 that really, really, really let me down because I really wanted it to be good. Uh, that game, I still remember its story. I still remember what goes on, even though it really disappointed me. And I guess I will be talking about that in a video because I should get the platinum. Anyway, that has been it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope to see you again soon. Peace.